Hi, I'm Sir Pat, your finite mathematics teacher. I'm here to help you make sense of patterns, logic, decision making, and numbers that actually matter in real life. Hello learners, welcome to our first creative math activity, Mirror Your Name. Here's how the activity works. Step 1. Get a piece of paper and fold it vertically in half. Step 2. On the left side of the fold, write your name in all capital letters, but only draw half of each letter, as if the fold is the mirror line. Step 3. Now, use a mirror and place it along the fold to see the full name appear. Or, if you prefer, draw the other half to complete the reflection. Step 4. Decorate it if you want. Add colors, patterns, or designs that show your personality. Take a moment to observe which letters in your name have symmetry. Which ones don't? You'll notice that letters like A, M, and T look great in a mirror. When you're done, take a photo of your mirrored name and share it with the class. Let's celebrate math, art, and creativity, all in one. Symmetry is an important concept in geometry. It means that one part of an object looks the same as another part when we fold, flip, slide, or turn it. When both parts match perfectly, the object has symmetry. If they don't match, we call it asymmetric. You can think of symmetry like a perfect balance. Both sides of the object are equal in size and shape. Let's look at some examples. Checkmark a butterfly has wings that look the same on both sides. Checkmark the letter A looks balanced. Both sides match. Checkmark a face, like yours, has a nose in the center, and eyes and ears on each side. Now, let's compare that with objects that are asymmetric, or not balanced. Multiply the letter R doesn't match on both sides. Multiply a tree with more branches on one side than the other is asymmetric. Multiply a drawing that's random or uneven won't have symmetry either. Symmetry helps us recognize patterns, balance, and structure. It's everywhere, from nature to art, and even in the things we use every day. Take a look around you. Can you find something that has symmetry? Or something that doesn't? Let's talk about reflection symmetry, also known as mirror symmetry. This happens when one half of an object is a mirror image of the other half. Imagine placing a mirror right in the middle of the object, along an invisible line called the line of symmetry. If both sides match exactly, then the object has reflection symmetry. For example, look at this butterfly. If we place a mirror down the center of its body, the left wing reflects the right wing, perfectly balanced. Up triangle now take a look at this triangle. If we draw a line from the top point straight down the middle, one side reflects onto the other side. This shows that the triangle also has reflection symmetry. So remember, if one side is the mirror image of the other side, just like what you see in these examples, that's reflection symmetry. A line of symmetry is a straight line that divides a shape into two equal parts, where one side is an exact reflection, or mirror image, of the other. Let's look at some examples. Black medium square this is a square. A square has four lines of symmetry, two across the middle, and two diagonally. No matter which line you choose, the parts on each side will match exactly. Hollow rectangle this is a rectangle. It has two lines of symmetry, one vertical and one horizontal. But unlike the square, a rectangle does not have diagonal lines of symmetry. Large diamond a rhombus has two lines of symmetry, one from top to bottom, and one from side to side. Its sides are all equal, but the angles are not right angles like a square. Up triangle and equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry, one through each vertex down to the middle of the opposite side. All its sides and angles are equal. Down triangle and isosceles triangle has one line of symmetry, which goes from the top vertex down to the middle of the base. Only two sides and two angles are equal here. Up triangle a scaling triangle has no lines of symmetry, because none of its sides or angles are the same. So remember, a line of symmetry helps us see whether a shape is balanced and mirrored. The more equal parts a shape has, the more lines of symmetry it can have. Now let's explore rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry happens when a shape or object still looks the same after being rotated, or turned, around a central point, by a certain angle. 
In simple terms, if you can turn a shape and it matches its original position before a full 360 degree turn, then it has rotational symmetry. Let's look at some examples. First, the regular pentagon. When we rotate it around its center, it fits into itself five times in one full turn. So, we say it has rotational symmetry of order 5, because it matches its shape five times in 360 degrees. Now look at this parallelogram. It only looks the same twice in a full rotation, once at 0 degrees, and again at 180 degrees. So, its rotational symmetry is order 2. Remember, the order of rotational symmetry tells us how many times a shape matches itself when we rotate it in a full circle. If a shape does not match itself at all before reaching 360 degrees, then it does not have rotational symmetry. When we talk about rotational symmetry, there's always a special point that stays in place while the rest of the shape turns. This point is called the center of rotation. It's the fixed point around which the rotation occurs, and it does not move, even though the rest of the shape does. Now here's something important. In many shapes, like squares, rectangles, and rhombuses, the center of rotation is found at the point where the diagonals intersect. Let's look at some examples. Black medium square in a square, draw both diagonals, from corner to opposite corner. Where they cross is the center of rotation. This is the exact middle of the square. Hollow rectangle in a rectangle, even though the sides are not all equal, the diagonals still cross in the center, and that's where the shape rotates. Large diamond for a rhombus, the diagonals also meet at the center. That intersection point is the center of rotation, and also where the shape balances. And in a regular hexagon, the center of rotation is again at the point where all diagonals and lines of symmetry meet. This central point allows the hexagon to rotate multiple times and still look the same. So remember, the center of rotation is often found at the intersection of the diagonals, and it's the key to understanding how and why a shape rotates in symmetry. Let's talk about the angle of rotation. The angle of rotation is the smallest angle at which a shape can be turned or rotated so that it looks exactly the same as it did before. This happens in shapes that have rotational symmetry. Now let's look at a rhombus. A rhombus has rotational symmetry of order 2. That means it matches its original shape two times in one full turn, once at the start, and again halfway through. To find the angle of rotation, we divide 360 degrees by the order of rotation. So for the rhombus, 360 divided by 2 equals 180 degrees. That means when we rotate the rhombus by 180 degrees, it looks exactly the same as it did at the beginning. So remember, the angle of rotation tells us the smallest turn a shape can make to land back on itself. And for a rhombus, that angle is 180 degrees. In this activity, you're going to explore the beauty of symmetry in both shapes and nature. Here's what to do. Step 1 Look closely at each shape or picture from nature. These might include things like leaves, flowers, insects, or shells all of which can show amazing symmetry. Step 2. Use a ruler to draw any lines of symmetry you can find. Ask yourself, can I divide this into two equal parts that mirror each other? Step 3. Next, try to see if the shape or picture has rotational symmetry. Find the center of rotation, usually where the shape balances or where diagonals meet. Step 4. Estimate the angle of rotation. How far do you have to turn it before it looks the same again? Step 5 Finally, count how many times the object matches itself in one full turn. That number is called the order of rotation. For example, a leaf may have one line of symmetry, a flower like a daisy might rotate several times and still look the same, and a rhombus has an angle of rotation of 180 degrees with order 2. Take your time, observe closely, and have fun discovering symmetry all around you, both in math and in nature.